couple of videos are going to be about snatch prerequisites. So what are the things that we have to have nailed down before we do that kettlebell snatch? Specifically, today we're gonna talk about the squat versus the hinge and what that even means, how do we set it up, what do we do? So the squat and the hinge are movement patterns. You have all of these different exercises. We can think of millions of exercises. However, we only have a handful of movement patterns, squat, hinge, lunge, push, pull, push and pull are horizontal and vertical. And you know, based on what textbook you're reading, there's a couple more that will throw in gait or rotation or this or that. But those are, that's the bread and butter. And from there, all of our exercises come. So it's very important if you're going to do any sort of deadlift, any sort of kettlebell swing or snatch, that we understand the difference between the squat and the hinge. So let's talk about it right now. The squat, you're going to bend at your knees. So your knees have deep knee flexion, which means a deep bend. Your lower body is going to be in line with your knees, and your chest is going to be above your hips. So knees and hips are in line for the squat. When we do a hinge-based movement, and we're going to send our hips back towards the wall, you can see that our, my hips are higher than my knees. So now there's a line going up here where my hips are higher than my knees. My shoulders are also still higher than my hips. So really, the difference here is going to be sending the booty back versus sending the booty down. Squat, we go down, and hinge, we send the booty back, okay? So that's the first thing that you need to know is what is the knee flexion in this? In your hinge, you're just keeping a soft bend in the knees. You're not locked out, and you're moving your hips back, trying to feel your hamstrings, your glutes, and your core, okay? That is step number one. Step number two is how do we set up for a deadlift, which is part of the hip hinge. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is have that bell by your ankle. So it's not going to be in front of you. A lot of people will deadlift from here and this is leaning their entire body weight forward, spilling and rounding the back. So you do wanna put those, that bell between your ankles. After you put the bell between your ankles, you're gonna set your neutral spine. So we're not out, we're not in, we're just neutral, we're just neutral. So I'm already scanning my body, my foot is in a tripod, so there are three big points of contact with the ground. I'm in neutral, I'm going to exhale to get to neutral, inhale, keep that neutral spine as I come back, put my hands on the bell, and then I'm gonna kinda take the tension out of this. So the way that I do that is I wanna feel my hips, right, my glutes, and my core on. So once I do that, I'm gonna pretend like this bell is 100 pounds and make sure that I have about 60% of weight in my back of my heels, that I can feel my hamstrings. If you can't feel your hamstrings, you might need to lift those hips just slightly and that my shoulders are packed in. So that's why the bell isn't out here, right? You can tell that these shoulders aren't packed in and that can cause some rounding. So shoulders stay packed in like you have a $100 bill underneath these armpits. And then you're gonna push the floor away with an exhale. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. That is your Dead kettlebell, dead lift. We looked from the bottom all the way up to the top, and when you end in this locked out position, everything is squeezed, glutes, booty, core, and then you lower back down. All right, so there's your kettlebell deadlift, and that is how you set up and execute it. The last movement that I wanna go over with you is the single arm kettlebell deadlift. So you're gonna set up the same way that you would set up for your regular deadlift, except this time, if it's your right hand, it's gonna go on the left corner of the spell. So not the one closest to you, the one furthest from you. And the reason why we're doing this is because the snatch we're gonna do as a one arm movement. So we really just wanna get that natural hip hinge when we have the, dead, the um, kettlebell in our hand. So if we do a few of these, 
We're gonna get used to the deadlift with a single arm, which is going to be really important when we move into the clean coming up. So the progression was understand the hip hinge movement body weight, then go ahead and do a two hand kettlebell deadlift, making sure that you keep that neutral pelvis and can feel it in your glutes. We're back loading that deadlift and then coming up into a plank like position. And then finally, we did that single arm deadlift. And that's all I got for you for day one. Enjoy, try these drills out. And if you wanna send me a little video to make sure that you have your hinge down correctly, then hit me up in the email or the DMs and I'll see you tomorrow.